Arthur Kessler, the Hungarian expatriate Jewish fellow who became a Order of the OBE, uh, Order of the Bowel Movement of the British Empire. And what, Ka what Kessler will do is lay out in 1967 yet a whole nother angle to the globalist plan that we've been analyzing in all these books that we haven't seen the other characters so far lay out. Now we've seen Bertrand Russell project things in the future. We've seen Quigley detail the, the power structure itself. And we've seen H.G. Wells say quite a bit of creepy, creepy stuff. H.G. Wells creepy pasta. And now we're going to look at Kessler. And of course, people probably know Kessler from his book, uh, 13th Tribe. I think that's it. I've got it here somewhere. And people most likely know Kessler from 13th Tribe, but he also has a lot of other books. The Janus Age, which is interesting because Kessler will actually include a lot of esoteric and occult concepts in his books when he talks about the New World Order. Now, he, I believe, is a, a kind of Luciferian character. Uh, he's not an out, outside, out, outer portico propagandist like H.G. Wells, who we did see was pretty sophisticated. Kessler's more inner circle, inner sanctum, because he seems to be anticipating a lot way ahead of time like Bertrand Russell and calling for some very uh, outlandish and, and genocidal actions. Uh, but the book is also insightful because he's going to tell us quite a bit about what the establishment knows about human nature that they've kind of kept to themselves and discoveries that have been made that they've hidden. You've heard me talk for many years about hidden metaphysics. And that's because Russell talked about it in the book that we analyzed. It's also mentioned in Brave New World, right in the section where the uh, they talk about discoveries being made. John the Savage and some other characters are talking to Mustafa Mon, the socialist controller, and they talk about actually finding metaphysical truths through their research and they find out that that's all censored, that you can't talk about that. Uh, and so some of that's actually going to be mentioned in the, the early chapters of this book. But this book is very strange. It's not like what you would expect. It's You're going to get like in the first half of the book, oddly enough, all of these arguments against materialism, physicalism, psychologism, reductionism, uh, you know, like hardcore materialism, basically. So all that gets in many ways refuted. He's actually going to bring forth all of these arguments, many arguments that I've actually made before. And I had not read the, the totality of this book until, you know, the last couple weeks. Um, I did read the chapter, the most deadly chapter when I wrote my book because I cited it in my book. Uh, but I had not read the entire book and it's just kind of blown away at what all is in here. It, it's, it's, it's going to take some time to unpack, but of course this is the free, uh, third, maybe, I don't know how long this video will be. This is the free section from Jay Dyer from Jay's analysis. And if you want to view the full talk, of course you can subscribe to Jay's analysis for four ninety five a month or for $60 a year. You can also get a copy of my book, Esoteric Hollywood, Sex, Cults, and Symbols in Film. Sign copies at my website. And you can also watch my show with Jay Widener, Hollywood Decoded, where we break down all the biggest films in an unparalleled way. But we want to get into Kessler here. So what you're getting in the first half of the book is all of these patterns, what he calls holons, and hierarchies and structures in nature that show that... Uh, rank materialism is completely nonsensical. Now, I've been saying this for a long time. Rank-ass materialists stinking it up in here. And here we have Kessler admitting all this. And he's going to say all these things like language. Language presupposes things like consciousness. But language presupposes a transcendental subjective self or unity. Uh, he's going to say that 
materialism engages in a lot of fallacies and a lot of contradictions. Now, again, this is a high-level Illuminist character here, right? Um, and so he's going to say that we can improve upon the behaviorist trend from Skinner and Pavlov and Watson and all those characters. It's time to move into the new phase, move into a new stage of understanding man and this is going to involve cybernetics and transhumanism, actually. So that's once we start getting into that, we start to see where this book's going. You might think, oh, you know, you're reading the first hundred pages, and it's like, man, there's a lot of good arguments here against materialism. Maybe Kessler's making an interesting point, but you haven't gotten to where he's taking you. You see, he's taking you to the floppy disk, to the thumb drive, to the Commodore 64. And that you will become these things. Not you. You're going to die. But they will become these things. That's what literally what he says. Now, you think, well, okay, so that's just transhumanism. Big deal. Now, let's, <clears throat> let's see the crazed, maniacal, demoniacal impetus behind this plan. And it is that because, as you're going to see, Kessler uh, actually committed suicide. If you read his bio. So this is not a, a happy dude. This is not a man who. Whose philosophy. Really offers any hope or answer. As we see with many of these maniacal characters. That get on these crazed power trips. Crowley. You know these kinds of. They end up. You know. Drug addicts. Uh, ODing and dying in total poverty. And with no family or friends or anything. Uh, or they commit suicide, right? Now, why would Kessler be led to something like suicide, given all of these great honors from the world and being made a member of the Order of the British Empire and all this stuff, and uh, for a former Marxist, right? Now, why would you kill, kill yourself if you're one of the greatest men of our century, right? And you've written some of the greatest books, supposedly. Well, he says... Mankind is a giant evolutionary freak of nature. You see, this is what you get at the end of the book after he's told you all these contradictions in behaviorism, in operant conditioning, and in materialism, naturalistic reductionism, all this stuff. He's told you that all that stuff is, is nonsense, which we already knew if you're you know if you read my stuff. Uh, but you've been but he but all these people were duped by this stuff. Right. This is again what I'm sitting. What I've been saying. Uh, so now everybody's got to be brought into a new phase where the ideas of consciousness and spirituality and metaphysics are going to come back. Now that mankind has been broken down, been basically dismantled and disjointed and turned into a, a fragmented, chaotic entity. I'm speaking here of the last several hundred years of the revolutions, right? This is, again, this is in the train, the tradition of the revolutionaries, the final revolution that Huxley talked about. So these are the revolutionaries, final revolution, stages and phases of fake revolutions engineered by bankers. And man, he says, is a disease. So what's happened is evolution has given us a, 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 a thrown us for a loop bait and switch from the Gar the Darwin God and what happened well man we find out evolved to eat men but the cannibalistic tendency in man led to Promethean man and Promethean man is the Superman the rational man. So if you eat your people, right? We're talking Chaco chicken here. If you watch X-Files. <laughs> you eat your peeps. I don't mean peeps. I mean your people peeps. Eat your peeps. And you are enlightened. And this is what le led to evolution. I'm not joking. This is what he says. This is page 330. Two, 1 to 32. And by the way, his basis for this is Peking Man. <laughs> Another one of these obvious frauds like uh, 
Piltdown Man, Nebraska Man, Peking Man is just as fake as all the rest of that bullshit. Um, but he says, well, oh, there's evidence that Peking Man ate men, other men, and this <laughs> prompted his, you know, 2001 Space Odyssey new stage of consciousness evolution to, to from Peking Man to man. So Promethean Man is Cannibal Man, and therefore the elites can be cannibalistic in the sense of it's okay, he says, to kill off most of the people. Why? Because most of those other people just didn't evolve. They're, they've remained in uh, their primitive state of being controlled like an animal, basically. Right. So you're like the caveman. Remember the Geico commercials? I always thought those Geico commercials are actually intentionally kind of making this point that you're all a bunch of dumbass cavemen out there. You actually buy into this system, believe in all this junk, and this whole thing is in intended to destroy you. So you're idiot cavemen. That's what Kessler's saying. You're idiot cavemen. You go and watch your sports balls, right? You play with your sports balls while you watch sports ball. You're an idiot caveman. Therefore, you must die, and you will die. Now, how is that going to happen? How is everybody going to be killed if the elite well, they can't just go out and chop everybody's heads off and eat them. So what are they going to do? Well, they're going to do CIA-sponsored Radio Liberty conferences in the 60s, which I wrote about in my book, right? The Mind Control Conference. And they're going to explain at the Mind Control Conference how, through genetically modified organisms and through every possible means of mind control, all irrational men will be disposed of by attacking the female re reproductive cycle it will be altered to create bitch tits soy male nine thousands as davis says to create tranny sylvania we're all going to live in tranny sylvania under count drag you love that's my joke and for all of you people that say that i'm not funny i just proved to you that i'm funny tranny sylvania is funny you're laughing right now because it's funny now, this is no, no joking matter because they really are wanting to turn everything into tranny. We're all going to live in tranny Sylvania. And these are the, the Dragula parasites that are going to be sucking it all out of our necks like a juice box. And, it, and he says in, in the next page, 334, that what was discussed at this mind control symposium, again, this is in my book, Esoteric Hollywood, is the alteration of man's RNA so that the dudes are going to have big floppy titties, big pancake titties, and the, the chicks are going to have dicks, okay? I know that this is offensive to you, some of you out there with your sensitive, pious ears, but this is what we're, this is reality here. This is what we're talking, this is what we're facing here, is psychos, and CIA psychos. This, this is a CIA conference. Kessler's talking about it with a bunch of, doctors and psychiatrists and sociologists, Holger Haydn, uh, Dean San Saunders, San Francisco Medical School, all these MIT type people. And they're saying, how can we flip people's DNA so that they come out of the wombs before we have the test tube babies, before you're a beaker baby, a Bunsen, Bunsen baby. How can we flip that and give them, give them bitch tits? If you saw Fight Club, well, first section, the, uh, the first uh, example is tap water. Put it in the tap water, page three thirty four. This is what he says. This is what he says. Can you can you read? Tap water to the tap water. Now this comes up multiple times in the book. This is just a section called Mutating Man. Mutating Man. Toxic Avenger. But Toxic Avenger was masculine. You're not even gonna, you're not gonna be masculine, Toxic Avenger. It's even worse. Then he goes on to say, we're gonna bring this in through pharma. Pharmacological means, food, water, and big pharma. That's what he says. 
And he says again that this will have to everywhere through corporate government be added to the water everywhere. And he's not talking about flor just fluoride. He's saying we're going to add all kinds of stuff to the water. A cocktail. That's what he says. Page 337. A cocktail will be added. He says pills will be made fashionable. All kinds of new pills. Trendy pills is why all your girlfriends are pill heads. If you live in the middle America or in the south. So all these chicks are pill heads. Because this, is, this was done by design. To sell everybody on mass pills. Pills, 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 pills. Pills and tap water is the plan to mutate man. Yes, the frogs are turning gay. So if you want to watch the rest of this breakdown, we're going to break down a whole 350 pages of this book in depth. You can subscribe to Jay's Analysis for $95 a month or for $60 a year. And now I also have several people now who have uh, engaged in the tutoring sessions, which has uh, turned out very well. And uh, you can go to my Patreon account and you can subscribe there for various levels and tiers of tutoring where we will actually discuss philosophy, theology, history, metaphysics, whatever you want to get into. Uh, we'll do the one-on-one -on -one tutoring. I'll give you the study course, book recommendations, however you want to do it, whatever works best for you. So you can do that there. And uh, again, check out my book, check out uh, Hollywood Decoded, where we also get into this kind of stuff too in film, how it's all presented in films. But here you have Psycho Kessler saying that, yes, we know that there's a ghost in the machine and that you're not just a, um, a robot, a biological robot, like the materialist said. However, we're going to stamp out whatever is left of the ghost in your machine. And we're going to turn you into Tranny Sylvania. That's what he says. And then you're all going to die and then the elite will have all the real secrets. He says. He says that, too, by the way. So, you've been listening to Jay's analysis. Thank you. Oh, share this, too. Subscribe here and share this.